Welcome to another mighty fine. You do, you have to sing Rolling, right? Yeah, uh, because it'd be funny if he did, and I had to say it again. <coughs> another fine <laughs> episode of Reblogatog. I believe this is issue episode twenty-three. Rambling number twenty-three. <laughs> rambling twenty-three. Rambling I'm, twenty-three. I'm a big fan of Rambling twenty-three. Um, so anyway, we do uh, regurgitate some of what we find entertaining off of Mark Rosewater's Tumblr account blog called Blogatog. Blog we call it Reblogatog. So if you're a first-time listener and first-time caller, uh, you can't really call oh, us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How'd you know. get my number? <laughs> I guess you could call the store. Anyway. <laughs> um, so we're just going to jump right in this week, follow along, see if you learn anything. I learned a few things this week. Awesome. Always and had good. some some interesting stuff come up, so we'll get to that in good course. Um, I think I might be backwards here, so let me see. Well, you should have been right. Was I? This, uh, today's uh... Today's, uh, okay. Gosh, don't you even know what today is? No, I do not know what today is. <laughs> we always start from a week ago, because that's where we wrapped up a week ago. So, I'm always going backwards on this thing. Anyway, assuming you didn't have to work to introduce it in an upcoming set, what existing legendary creature from Magic's past would you like to create a brand new card for? What about a character that hasn't had a card made yet? <laughs> Mayro's choice, Norin I'm the wary. wary. And I would love that. I've built Norin decks. Norin is, is fun. You just get a lot of ETBs out of yeah. it. So... Take advantage of ETBs. Um, I pulled one in Mystery Boosters and I've been thinking about it, but I haven't built one. Either in this or somewhere else, I I think he would make him a coward. Ah, that would make sense. Uh, I don't think I have it in here, but yeah, Norrin Uh, Norrin should be a coward. That would make absolute sense. Uh, What is the highest non-variable scry value you can put on a card? Uh, Meryl says scry 5 is the highest he can see them doing. But practically speaking, uh, we don't we won't see much above three scry three. I don't know if I can think of more than scry three off the top of my head on a card right now. But I found it interesting that he yeah. thought they could go, go to, to scry, five. scry five. Scry That's, five would be wow. I wouldn't mind scrying five That's, cards. That's really good, you know. Uh. Uh, in this week's making magic article, you talked about dryad arbor causing rules problems and probably never coming to standard. I'm curious as to why. We get lands that can become creatures all the time, like Mutavolt, Mutavolt, and they don't seem to cause similar problems. I'm I'm going to stop here for a minute, and he's doing a three, uh, a three week, three part article series on all the cards from Future Sight, Mm. the Future Shifted cards, and what he thinks the likelihood of them being ever printed are, the ones that haven't been. And he he, he goes over the mechanics and so forth. So we're two-thirds of the way through that. You ought to check them out if you enjoy that kind of thing. And if you're listening to this like 40 years from now, it's still on the internet. Yeah, yeah, nothing ever leaves you. It's it's there. So anyway, a land that becomes a creature on the battlefield is fine. Right. That's like Mutavolt. A land that's also a creature in other zones, especially the hand, mm-hmm. is problematic. So that's where the, the rules issues the come from. The hand and the graveyard. I know it's enabled shenanigans with... Uh, it's just weird that yeah. you play it and you can't do anything with it because it has summoning sickness. sickness. So it's it's weird right there. Right. right. It's, not your, it's not a good turn one land drop. It isn't. <laughs> um, but it's not bad for, you know, uh, Green Sun Zenith for... For right. Zero is right. Nice. Green Sun Zero. It allows you to do some things like that. <laughs> um, hey there, Mark. Since you guys seem to have changed your stance of late on creature errata, uh-huh. twenty-two yeah. cards becoming nobles. One card became a warlock. Six cards becoming sharks. Seventy-five cards becoming dogs. <laughs> just since last year, <laughs> what are the chances of you revisiting the errata of making Norin a coward? and making the creatures with proper names into legendary creatures. King Suleiman, Old Man of the Sea, Ali from Cairo, of Cairo, Frankenstein, Nial Sylvain, Alibaba, Abu Jafar, Aladdin. It only seems fitting. Are you going to do the Frankenstein thing? Oh No, well, well it's Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, it's Frankenstein's <laughs> monster. <laughs> but also, we this question comes up a lot. It does. <laughs> we, we answer this one a lot, so it's the same answer on that part. But the, the Norin thing, I'm, you know... 
Uh. Yeah, he mentioned. I, I've read that before. Uh, the former is a possibility, so Norrin a coward. Norrin becoming a but coward. But making something legendary is adding a drawback and thus functional red. I thought there was some Norrin reference, but I just couldn't. Right. I missed it when I reread it and everything. So, yeah, that's functional errata. And the first functional errata that they've issued in forever was how companions work. Right. Because they totally... Before that, there'd screwed been... Screwed them over, I guess, you know. Before that, there'd been... What, something? Was it something that ratted back from, like, Urza's block as soon as it came out because it was not right or something? There's it's been, happened there's once been or instances, twice. but yeah, it's 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 rare. <laughs> Nothing like a whole mechanic. <laughs> Green ninjas, if or when? What do Ugh. you guys think? I was kind of surprised at this one, but never say never. Right. If, but I could see it happening in the right environment. Right. Ah. So it's an if, but the right environment. He said that about a lot of things that you would go, uh, what you know? Green. Nature. Red merfolk. In the right environment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Volcanic pools of lava. Uh, I, I was know. thinking of them desert merfolk, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that, you know. They just chill in the oasis. And <laughs> Do you think escape, the ability, solved the repetitive play issues of dredge? Yeah. Yeah. It was Yeah, much. it did. You're exiling cards. You, you're eventually going to eat up that graveyard right. and not be able to escape anymore. So, yeah, it, it was a, a, a nice solution to the repetitive brokenness that is Dredge. Dredge, yeah. We could just about, the Storm Scale could just about be called the Dredge Scale, but it would sound weird. It now, would. Especially, the Storm Scale sounds But, better. I mean, I think other than Storm, Dredge might be the only thing out of 10, because I think Dredge is essentially a, a, a 10. Well, banding is, oh, is a 10, and right. bands with other legends is an 11. I right. <laughs> well, I meant, I meant things that were there for their power level. Right. <laughs> Dredge is the only thing that reaches a power level of Storm. <laughs> All right. Mark, can you uh, give us so? I don't want to interrupt you too much, but... It, but it, you did. Uh, did we... Uh, are we going back to this one, or did we... Did I miss one? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> what are the chances we get Exert back outside of Amonkhet? Uh, not too bad. He thinks it's a good mechanic. Uh, so, Exert, I think, played fine. Right. I think it's a fantastic mechanic, actually. That's, Get a little extra boost, then you pay for, for it. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's very simple, but it allows a lot of open space for you to do stuff on creatures. It's not quite as, as some of us have got tired of the value on ETBs. When you can Exert, you can get a, put a powerful effect on that creature still. But there's a major yeah. drawback then. Yeah. Or, so. you, or you find some way to give it vigilance. Right. <laughs> That's the good stuff there. <laughs> All right, Mark, can you give a social distancing high five to the people who have fun putting little jokes into the rulings on cards and gather? <laughs> From Void Winterer to Thantis the War Weaver, it's the little nods and funny comments that bring a smile to my face when I run across them. Remember, don't actually, actually eat the food tokens. Don't eat the delicious magic cards. So, if you didn't know, if you never read through Gather, and I don't just go perusing right. through it. I've always thought we should do an episode on these at some point, just for some Well, fun. we'll have to... I'm going to skip through here and tell you some of them. I'm going to look for the shorter ones, alright? <laughs> Void Winterer says, Yes, your opponent can't even. We, we know. know. That's that's a short one. He mentioned that. What else did he mention besides Void Winner? Thantis. I don't know the Thantis one. The let's, first... let's see if it's on here. I don't. I don't know either. If... I just found. Uh, I found somebody that was tracking them. So... Jade Light Ranger is always. I don't. A... I don't think he's got it on here. So yeah. Jade Light Ranger is always the one that comes to my mind because Jade Light Ranger was out of Ixlon and said, uh, when Jade Light Ranger enters the battlefield, it explores. Then it explores again, and I believe it's. Uh, Oracle ruling says if if you leave the card on top the first time you explore, act surprised when you look at it the second time, no. so you don't hurt Dread Light Ranger's feelings. <laughs> Falling Star says it must flip like a coin and not like a frisbee. <laughs> um, just because it's one of my personal favorite cards, and I saw it at the top, uh, it is a little bit longer. But Rhythm of the Wild has one of these that talks specifically about you can, when you give Riot to a creature with haste, you can choose to give it double haste. We don't know why he would want to do that, but we're not going to tell Gruul how to live their life. 
<laughs> he paraphrased. I was skipping it because it wasn't a short one. You right. Know? But they're right. You don't tell Gruel how to live their life. Double haste matters. <laughs> this isn't exactly funny, but Nameless Race is nameless. It does not have a creature, creature type. type. It's nameless. Uh, <laughs> the next one I've never seen. <laughs> Mind Slaver. You could gain control of yourself using Mind Slaver, but gaining control of yourself doesn't really do, do anything. anything. <laughs> I didn't realize. It doesn't say target opponent, I guess, does it? It just says target player. Island of Whack Whack says this is not an <laughs> island. Uh, so anyway, that's some There's short some good ones. ones. There's some real but good ones out there. Take a look at them when you get a chance. It's it's kind of interesting. Yeah, okay? it's uh, it's fun stuff. All right, a couple shots here at White. Hi there, Mark. Could you be so kind as to settle a color pie question for me that's turned into a bit of an argument on Twitter? Oh lord, someone has claimed protection from creatures is a pie break in White. Is this true oh. now, despite all cards with the ability being White? Protection from creatures is something white can do. It's just not an ability we like to use frequently. Yeah. And a quick follow-up. Is there any subset of protection that would be a color pie break in white? I would think not. Not that he can think <laughs> of. White is the color of protection. Yeah. If protection can be done, white's the color that can do it. The circle of protection. All of them were white. <laughs> you know? <laughs> now, we're going to digress a little bit. So, follow us with the fun. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> Will silver boarded sets ever answer the question <laughs> Is a hot dog on a bun a sandwich? <laughs> Mayor says, I can answer it for you. It is not. <laughs> now, we're going to go deep here, all right? <laughs> if a hot dog is not a sandwich, then how do you define a sandwich? Mayor says, A thing commonly referred to as a sandwich. <laughs> Someone says, I can answer that for you. It is not. Merriam-Webster disagrees. disagrees. Language needs to be more explanative than definitional. Now, we're going to jump ahead and get a couple other comments that are about this, this thing going on. I'm very glad you have this vision of languages, Mark. It's a great <laughs> vision that not many people would agree with. You are obviously right, even though I guess it depends on your definition of language. And if you can help propagate this vision, it's really cool. So thank you, I guess. I'm sincerely happy. I want to embolden people to craft their own words when they make sense and are useful. Now that's actually, maybe I skipped over the other things that go with this. Hold on. No? Or you didn't have them highlighted then, maybe. Oh, I did skip over. Oh, Sorry. you were on the wrong... Because uh, we're, on, we're on the whole language thing. I, my gotcha. apologies. Because these all kind of go with that. Is there a color that has access to first strike, but not double strike? Thank you. No. They go hand in hand, color pie wise. Uh, That's one word. One word. How is color pie wise a real <laughs> card? There are no such things as a real, real word. word. If you use a string of letters and people understand the meaning of what you're saying... It's a word. That's how language works. Ah. And so then I'll reread this. I'm very glad you have this vision of languages, Mark. It's a great vision that not many people would agree with. You are obviously right, even though I guess it depends on your definition of language. And if you can help propagate this vision, it's really cool. So thank you, I guess. I'm sincerely happy. <laughs> I want to embolden people to craft their own words when they make sense and are useful. And then one last one on this. Mark, I want to tell you that as a person who studied languages, as my degree, your understanding of what language is, what its purpose in day-to-day -day life is, and how it proliferates is completely correct and in line with the way most serious linguists, historians, and sociologists understand yep. and talk about language as a concept. His reply to that was just a smiley, smiley face. face. Yep. Uh, you know, to quote Thor, all words are made up. <laughs> <laughs> So. You know, when I was a kid back there when the rocks were soft, thank you, Evan, for that phrase, um, ain't, ain't a word, <laughs> wasn't in the dictionary. Proper was are not. But if you look it up, ain't is in the dictionary. Yeah. So you would be wrong not to use ain't because it is in there. Okay, moving along, I think. Yes. If a transformed side is a different color from the untransformed side, 
Does that mean the t transform side can do anything its color can do, even if you pay no mana of that color to transform it or cast it? That's a fair question. For example, Archangel Avison in Avison the Purifier. He says, we treat the design as if it's the color of the mana cost. Okay. It can bend but not break that color. So I didn't go look at all the examples Example. of this yeah. to see if if they truly have been doing this. But it's an interesting idea that yeah. I hadn't thought of. That's a, I hadn't either. And it is interesting because we do have stuff that transforms into one that transforms from white to black, right? Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Hey, Mark, is there any reason the Planeswalker deck cards that tutor for the Keywalker, like Garrick's Warsteed and Chandra's Outburst, search for the Planeswalker by its name instead of by type? I always thought the cards were pretty neat, but I have never used any of them outside of the decks they come in because the walkers they come with tend to be underpowered. I changed them to type in my cube and have had a lot of success so far. Well, it's done to keep the power level oh, in check. Yeah, you answered your own question. Yeah. It does keep, they it's, tend to be underpowered. If <clears> it <throat> wasn't, then you could, those Planeswalker deck cards could be C and play. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> when they started making the Planeswalker decks and putting functionally unique cards right. in them, because that's the first place they started doing that outside of Commander, that were standard cards. Right. That, that was the very first place they started doing that. There was a lot of concern that they would make a card that would see standard play, play. and then it would shoot up in price because you could only get it out of a Planeswalker, Planeswalker deck. deck. So they do, they pretty much landed on Planeswalkers cost six mana in those, I think. Yeah. And usually those spells cost like three four. or four or five, and yeah. they only get that Planeswalker. But it's a power level consideration. All right, here's here's where we go into another little. I was about to say end. we're gonna go we're gonna go off. The <laughs> yeah, I was talking to four of my friends last night about Ikoria. All of us competitive minded, deeply enfranchised players. I'm gonna say that last part maybe. I don't know. Deeply enfranchised, deeply competitive. Does that mean enfranchised? Does deeply competitive mean deeply enfranchised? Uh, I think that's I, worth discussing for just a moment. I think we if can put that on chatter. You too, know, but. I think if you're deeply competitive, then yes, you are going to be fairly deeply enfranchised because you are spending a lot of time with the game. In general, you're playing the game. You know a lot about the cards. You care about the cards because you are competitively playing them. So I would that, say that I'm going to say that these people are not any of those things. All right. We all agreed that Companion and Mutate were neither innovative or exciting new ground for Magic, which is a very different opinion than Watsy. The set was really hyped up as being very innovative mechanically for Magic. Why are the opinions so popular opposite of each other? <laughs> Blessing. <Yeah. laughs> Mayro just tells it like it is once in a while. The simple answer is you and your three friends are incorrect. Yeah. Smiley face. Because <laughs> uh, he's never mean. They're incorrect. That That is totally... They, they were most definitely innovative. And exciting. Yeah. New ground. They. Uh, we had never had anything like Companion or Mutate before. Mutate... Uh, I mean, bestow was similar, but not to the level where it cared about stacking. But as using creatures as a... I mean, we had something somewhat similar, but Companion was... Totally new. Innovative and exciting. So exciting they had to change what Companion did. They had to destroy did. the mechanic. They had to destroy it, yeah. So. so that's a thing. We had a couple more following that same line of thought. <clears throat> when Companion was just commander-like mechanic for standard and mutate just worse bestow, I do not mean to sound disrespectful, but those mechanics did not have an innovative feel like Manifest had. You were just morphing spells. <laughs> I don't know how Manifest was more innovative than those two you just named. Am but I anyway, wrong? You're just, you're just morphing like spells, right? Morphing random cards. Cards, yes. yeah. <laughs> Magic has made over 20,000 cards, and there have been over 100 formats. Wow. <laughs> if your bar for innovation, quote unquote, <laughs> is not reminiscent of anything Magic has ever done before then almost nothing is innovative. So I'm not sure the term even means anything. Manifest, by the way, was a variant of Morph, Morph, which itself was inspired by two cards in Alpha. <laughs> Alpha. Yeah. So by your own definition, 
That wasn't innovative. <laughs> I forgot there were cards that yes. flipped all the way back in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and the last one on this subject. Mark, as someone who looks a little bit at the behind the, sp- behind the scenes, especially rules-wise, it seems insane to me that someone would call Mutate and Companion non-innovative. Yeah, I agree. If you just look at the rules changes and new rules introduced to accommodate mechanics, it's clear how much new and innovative stuff was introduced. How can you not call a mechanic that results in layers being reworked <laughs> non-innovative, for example? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I know that layers exist. Yeah. That makes me enfranchised. <laughs> if I knew how they worked, that would make me a savant. <laughs> That's, That's the difference. Uh... I define innovation as allowing you to do something you couldn't do before. I think you're right that looking at the rules changes needed to adapt a new mechanic yeah. card is a good metric because it clearly shows that the game couldn't do it before. Yeah. It's not a perfect metric as it's, it is possible to do something new that the rules happen to be able to handle, but it's a pretty good shorthand. I think that's true. I, I would absolutely uh, agree. I love when they try innovative stuff, even if it doesn't work, even if it falls flat. Right. I'd much rather, we talk about it all the time, I'd much rather see them well, do that than to just keep spewing out the same thing. Even though I just said that it's not as innovative as something like Companion, Mutate's probably my favorite mechanic I've seen in the last couple of years of Magic, actually. Mutate was just really cool. It's one mechanic that I was really sad we were only getting... We don't have blocks or anything anymore, so we didn't get more mutate. Right. Because it seems cool, especially to build commander, I, but it's hard to build when, I, you know, there's just not a big enough pool of them. <laughs> we have to wait X number of years probably before we get it again when we go back to Aquarius, yeah. which I'm assuming we will. Oh, so. I'm assuming. Hey, Mark, I guess my birthday trivia got buried, but my birthday was August 6th, and I was wondering if you had any trivia on extra turns in Magic. Oh. I don't know if we shared this one before, but it's an old story, and it's well worth sharing with you if you've never heard it. Here's one of my favorite original playtesting stories of Magic. <laughs> one of the playtesters goes up to Richard and says that he got the most powerful card in the whole playtest. He casts it and then automatically wins at the start of his opponent's turn. Richard racks his brain for what card he's talking <laughs> about because because he, he knows he didn't make a you-win card. So he asked to see it. The player shows him Time Walk, which originally read, Opponent loses next turn. Richard smiles and changes the template to, You get an extra turn. Uh-huh. Happy belated birthday. I don't know if I'd heard that one. That's an old story. But yeah, That's, original, uh-huh. if you can find, if you can get the original playtest cards, Opponent loses next turn. Uh-huh. That's the most powerful card Better in Magic. magic. <laughs> For a blue and one. For a blue and one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all I have to do is end my turn. When you start yours, game I'm over. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> pretty awesome. Did Mutate being in Aquaria impact the decision to not bring Bestow back in Theros Beyond Death? Hadn't considered that. Uh. No, we chose not to bring back Bestow in Theros Beyond Death before we created Mutate and Aquaria. Ah. So it wasn't a factor, according to Mero. Right. I but, think Mutate is way better than Bestow, by the way. I know you can lose out on all those other creatures when it gets killed or whatever, but, man, the, the fact that it has triggers that are working is just a really oh, cool yeah. design space. Hi, Mark. Any chance we could see land cycling or others... Island cycling, etc. Any time in the future, that'd be nice. The only type of cycling I see us doing in ba- is basic land cycling, right? Plane cycling, island. But they did have some type cycling, oh, like in Future Sighted. There was like a wizard cycling, uh, yeah. So he's saying, no, we're not going to do any of that. There's not going to be any type cycling like that. The land cycling, though, when they had some of those, they're just those are cool. I still love slamming a few of those in Commander decks just because it's always Elvish Aberration feels good late game or early game. It's like, oh, go get a forest or a big dork. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> if you solve the blue-red evergreen mechanic, uh, if you're not aware, they tried Prowess out, it doesn't work right. because it stacks. None of the other evergreens stack. Um, would you be allowed to tell us or would you have to pretend you didn't until it was released? 
I can't tell you anything until the information is public. Oh. So, I don't remember if we talked about last week or if I missed it and deleted it by accident. But he goes into a really detailed explanation about, and maybe it was last week we yeah, talked it, about it, um, how, you know, he has to pretend when he's answering uh, questions, like, we don't know right. the two years of stuff he knows. Right. Because he, he to, knows two years of stuff that he can't tell us. He has to act like he doesn't know that stuff. Compartmentalizing has to be one of his best skills. Oh, absolutely. It's got to be hard to keep that all under wraps. All right. Is artifact animation a bend for wipe? No. No. We haven't seen it. No. But that's an interesting space they could plumb a little bit. Artifact animation. They had tutors for it. They had tutors for artifacts, yeah. Yeah. That would be interesting. hmm. When do we get the Zendikar teases? And you know what that is, right? Yeah. He started doing what he did years ago, teasing the new set by telling us just some phrases, yes. just some weird things, things. about the set that right. we have to guess what it might be. Yeah, like... Uh, he's working on it. He's working on it. He's working on it. So not yet, but he is working on the article, so it's coming. Sorry so critical. <laughs> Not long ago, it came up whether or not ETB fight was appropriate in green. Your answer was, we're still debating it. I remember this. And then immediately, Kogla, the Titan Ape, was printed. (laughs) Seems like debate over. Were you even still debating it? This happened again in an arguably more extreme degree with Dog Tribal and the Mill keyword. You tell us that no decision has been made, but it clearly has. You want to surprise us... But how is this not lying to us, but with a quaint top hat on? Must Ooh. be British top hat. I mean, I know. I I I, th- I I think they probably a teenager thinks they're really smart. Ah, okay. That's kind of what I'm getting there. Okay, you know? I don't know. very judgy and very. You so, know. <laughs> I'm very upfront about the fact that I can't give away non-public information. Right. So I talk as if you don't know the non-public information. It's that. Or I literally answer no questions. I'd prefer him answer questions. I prefer him answer questions because it's a it's a hoot. Yeah, it's a hoot. So yeah, uh, sorry, so critical. Yeah. Oh, those are always fun. What? Oh, the next que- the oh. next question here. How long do you think it will be until another mechanical color pie article? I need enough things to change to make it worth it, and the color pie evolves slowly. It will be a few years, in my best guess. So he does those every once in a while. Yeah, they're always very interesting to read. We got a few questions coming up here. I didn't bunch them together about green a little bit. but Hi, Mark. Is Hurricane a break or a bend in modern green's color pie? Yeah. It is a break. Yeah. We don't let green do direct damage to players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we that bee sting, hornet sting, yeah. <laughs> uh, hurricane, those, yeah. those are all bad. Those are all gone. <laughs> does the introduction of the set booster make it more likely that we'll see made-for-draft cards like Custody Peacekeeper in standard set draft boosters. This was maybe the most interesting question of the week to me. He said it technically increases their chances, I guess. So if you ever played Conspiracy Mm. 1 or 2, there were Draft Matters cards. Right. So is there a chance we could get Drafts Matters cards in draft boosters. He says it technically increases the guess. I don't think it's something they're thinking of, no. but it's an interesting point. It is. And, you know, I would be honest to say that I would not be surprised in the next year or two if we see Conspiracy 3. Uh, I know I hear... I didn't get to play either Conspiracies, but I know people love the whole idea of the Conspiracy. And with everything they've been doing, it feels like a good thing to go back around to. They put a lot of stuff on the... On the plate, but we'll see. (laughs) Mark, do you believe that reprinting Hornet Queen, another green question, (laughs) into Arena, because that's that's coming to Arena, will confuse newer players about color pies since you've stated that this is a color pie break? If the decision was up to me, meaning him, Mark Rosewater, I personally wouldn't have reprinted it. Because that's going to put it in historic. Yep. That's going to put it in, well, it's already in Pioneer. So right. Puts it in Pioneer. 
Like I said, more green. <laughs> Is it just a coincidence that Oubliette was finally reprinted alongside the only other card, Mystic Gate, in Magic's history, which features the word Oubliette? <laughs> I like to think of it as an oubliette mini thing. <laughs> I, I didn't even realize Mystic Gate had it until I read nah, this. No, I didn't either. I'm not a big flavor text reader, apparently. Uh, but I had missed that. <laughs> Red Elemental Blast. Can you elaborate a little more the details of which part of it is a break and why? We're having an argument in my MTG forum. Thank you. Which part? Like all of them, other than a casting cost of a red. red. <laughs> yeah. And it being an instant. Yeah. Uh, red can neither counter spells nor destroy blue enchantments. Also, technically, it doesn't destroy creatures, but deals damage to them. Yeah. So, like all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. All of it. Love that card, though. <laughs> If Double Strike is tertiary in black, how long before we actually get a black Double Striker asking for a friend? His name is Riyami. <laughs> I'm skeptical we'll see it anytime soon. Um, I really thought we had one. Do we not? I didn't get to look this up, guys, so I'm right now. I don't. Unless there's a. Very I was recent, like I was thinking of a card, and I'm probably thinking of the wrong card, the wrong ability. But I was gonna look because yeah. now, now I must be thinking there's a black card, something. Maybe it's indestructible or something. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember now. But no, there isn't a black card with double strike. I didn't. I couldn't think of one off the top of my head. Yeah, but. I was gonna look that up so that I wouldn't be doing this very awkward part right now. <laughs> I did not. So there you go. And our last one for the night. Hi, Mark. I just got my jumpstart box. While I got some incredible pulls, two to fairy, one Liliana, and one unicorn, among other packs I wanted, I got a single red theme booster. I was expecting more variety in the same line, the common cards of a booster pack. Is it possible to control the as fan of booster packs in a box? <laughs> if you're not familiar, as fan yeah. refers to when you open a pack, How? you know, getting getting an assortment of colors and cards in there. Right. So they're wanting an as fan for the packs in a booster box. Mark says, I'm not sure we have the technology to do that. To the best of my knowledge, we can't collate packs like we do cards. But I'm sure at some point they could. Can, I, yeah. I just don't know if... I don't know that there. I don't know that it's worth it. I don't... Honest. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, I understand he likes red and he and didn't... There, he only there was only one, one pack. One out of 24 that was red themed, but... You know... I don't even know in the... Uh, in the 121 variations how many red themed... No, I are. don't either. I don't know if it's stacked towards other colors or not. Anyway, guys, we got to run out of here because we're going to shoot a Chatter of the Squirrels in about eight minutes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we do thank you for watching slash listening, tuning in. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thanks, Thanks guys.